how do you have patience in the middle of problems? For the time we have together on this occasion, I'd like to talk about some events that take place that are recorded in Mark chapter 5. We're really going to talk about verse 21 down through the end of the chapter. Jesus and some of his disciples have been on the eastern shore of the Sea of Galilee, but now they cross back to where those cities are, such as Capernaum. Beginning of verse 21, this is what you read. When Jesus had crossed over again by boat to the other side, a great multitude gathered to him, and he was by the sea. And behold, one of the rulers of the synagogue came, Jairus by name. When, when he saw him, he fell at his feet and begged him, saying earnestly, My little daughter lies at the point of death. Come and lay your hands on her that she may be healed and she will live. There's the request. The problem is something that's obvious. The daughter's at the point of death, and the request is, I need you, and I need you there now. And if it is Capernaum where Jairus is one of the rulers of the synagogue, then he has heard of the things that have happened when Jesus has been in Capernaum already. And the response of this request in verse number 24, So Jesus went with him, and a great multitude followed him, followed and thronged him. They're gathered around. It's a very close group. You've got people jostling together. At the beginning in verse number 25, down through verse 34, there is a delay in the uh, delay in the, in the procession. A certain woman who had a disease, a blood disease, for 12 years and had suffered many things from many physicians, she'd spent all that she had. It was no better, but grew worse. There is the disease, but here's the determination. Determination, verse 27 to 28. When she heard about Jesus, she came behind him in the crowd and touched his garment. She thought... If only I may touch his clothes, I may be made well. Immediately the fountain of her blood was dried up, and she felt in her body that she was healed of the affliction. And Jesus, immediately knowing in himself that power had gone out of him, turned around in the crowd and said, Who touched my clothes? And the disciples that are walking alongside Jesus make the statement, You see the multitude thronging around you, and you say, Who touched my clothes? There, there are people that are brushing against you all along this procession. It's almost a demand, who touched my clothes? And then the response, finally in verse 33, he looked around to see who was doing this thing, who had done this thing. Verse 33, the woman, fearing and trembling, knowing what had happened to her, came and fell down before him and told him the whole truth. An acknowledgement of everything. And then the response of Jesus to the woman in verse 34, Daughter, your faith has made you well. Go in peace and be healed of your affliction. But remember, this procession began when the ruler of the synagogue, one of the rulers of the synagogue, said, My daughter is at the point of death. I need you there in my house, and I need you now. What's going through the mind of Jairus is this delay is taking place. Seconds are ticking away. Minutes are passing. And my daughter is at the point of death. And, and, and Jesus has stopped to talk to somebody else. And there's a delay in this crowd. And every, every second of that delay brings my daughter one point closer to dying. In fact, while they're still talking, verse 35, while he was still speaking, someone came from the ruler of the synagogue's house who said, Your daughter's dead. Why trouble the teacher any further? How do you feel at that point? If you are the parent, how do you feel at that point? It's beyond remorse. We've gone through this request to this response to now this delay and then remorse because it seems like everything is lost. What's the problem? My pro my, the problem was my daughter was near death. Now there's nothing that can be done. We face problems. 2020 and even 2021 is starting out with problems. And sometimes it seems like there's nothing that can be done. And Jesus makes a statement. In verse 36, as soon as he heard what they were telling Jairus, he says, do not be afraid, only believe. Reassurance. Don't see how that's possible. It seems like everything is lost. In the following verses, beginning verse 37, Jesus permitted no one to follow him except Peter, James, and John, the brother of James. Then he came to the house of the ruler of the synagogue and saw the, the crowd, 
those who wept and wailed outside. Verse 39, when he came in, he said to them, Why make this commotion and weep? The child is not dead, but sleeping. And they laughed him to scorn. Ridicule. Request. Response. Delay. Remorse. Reassurance. Ridicule. The people that are ridiculing Jesus, they're certain that they know all of the details and what's going to happen from this point on. Do they really? It's kind of ironic that people that are the loudest with ridicule and perhaps any kind of, of, of setting are individuals that are usually the least informed. Isn't that interesting? And yet people in Capernaum have actually seen what Jesus has done so far, but this, no, he can't, he can't accomplish anything here. This is, and for him to make this statement, for Jesus to make this statement, they laughed him to scorn, ridicule. Jesus takes the father and the mother of the child, verse 40. Those who are with him goes to where the child was lying. And then says something that when you translate it, it is, little girl, I say to you, arise. Verse 41. Immediately the girl arose and walked, for she was 12 years old, and they were overcome with amazement. And he told them strictly that no one should know it. But how do you keep that a secret? After the ridicule comes reunion of the family. Request. Response. Delay. Remorse. Reassurance, ridicule from the crowd, reunion. If it were the case that individuals there that were listening to Jesus and thinking about what has happened in the past would have given him the benefit of the doubt that ridicule may not have been as severe as it was. We face problems in our lifetime. And sometimes they seem, seem extremely problematic. So like so that it seems like there's no solution inside. Patience in facing problems. Jairus, have patience. But they're saying my daughter is dead. Have patience in the middle of those problems, the most severe problem you've ever faced in your life. Still have patience. That's good advice for us. Tremendous passage. Intriguing event. But the parallel between what happens here and some of the things that we face today is unquestionable. Keep reading, Mark. Please stay safe.